Hi, everyone. Pastor Galen, lead pastor at Shine Hills Church. Thank you so much for joining us on this podcast. We hope that these podcasts will be a real encouragement to you on your spiritual journey. You can also connect with Cheyenne Hills at CheyenneHills.org. Hope you enjoy the program. Across the street and around the world, Cheyenne Hills. Well, hello again, everybody, and welcome to the podcast. And we're going to take a, I don't know, kind of a serious angle on some things yeah, today, yeah. Nathan, uh, in yeah. this particular hour that uh, actually we do 22 minutes usually is what we try to shoot right. for, because so that's the exact amount of time that people can uh, listen. I think that's the, the reason. We... <laughs> I can't go much longer than that. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Okay, so we had this discussion in our staff, and it kind of came up in what we call our our programming meeting when we're trying to think about music and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, there's a lot of things that's going on in, with within Christendom. Mm-hmm. Um, moral failings and uh, inappropriate, all kinds of inappropriateness, but a lot of it's moral, probably some of it's ethical. Um, and so when you see these people that are giants in our faith fall. Right. And then the question is, okay, should we, what if there's a song that came from that movement or should we use that song? Right. Uh, what if there's a, you know, what if there's some, some Bible studies that are, are really good and they interview uh, a particular person that has fallen morally, should we, I mean, is that next? And it's like, it, it was brought to us in a way that it's like, ah, that's a, it's a good discussion. Right. So we discussed it. I got some thoughts, but I'm kind of like, you're just hitting your cold. What's well, your that's, thoughts? That's fascinating. And you know, I, that's one of the things that any Christian in every, any generation has to wrestle with at some point. But right. I think I could pose some questions. First of all, something like, for instance, is everything that Moses wrote is it overturned because of his rebellion and striking the rock the second time oh wow uh we can look at that every god has used imperfect people throughout history for sure to say certain things now let's move to a more serious circumstance um we will, there are prominent names of people who have said good things yeah. who then have infamously fallen yeah. Uh, just in the last decade. Yep. Um, I remember I was just a, a very young person, but I, my dad was a pastor and in the decade before he was, uh, became a pastor, there were a couple famous people that had fallen international in, internationally, mm. uh, into sin. And it was, it was spoken of quite a lot at the time. Right. And, uh, does that mean that everything they said right was wrong? If the word of God was quoted from their lips, does that make the word of God wrong? No. The answer clearly is is no. Right. But I do think that it highlights to the Christian that we always have to look at everything a person says and look at it for the truth contained in it. Yeah. And uh and look less at the messenger, which is always something that should sober us as as ministers of the word of God. That, that is so true. And I think anytime, you know, that's almost a whole nother discussion is this whole rock star mentality right. that we've put pastors in. Right. And then that's, that's not fair to them. It's not fair. It's not what God would desire. Right. And I, I could question if, if even the pastors desire that. I think sometimes, I think sometimes that just happens, it, growth happens and, mm-hmm. and it just kind of, you, they, there's an isolation with that. Right. The higher up there, the ladder the person goes, if you want to call it that, you have to fight really hard to stay humble, to stay engaged in right. being a shepherd. Yes, you know? yeah. And uh, it's it would be pretty easy, I can see, um, to to be isolated because you've got so much input. But but anyway, but I think you're absolutely right. We got to be careful not to put them on pedestals. But the fact of the matter is, <clears throat> there are people, and so like in a sermon, would I ever quote? you know, some of these that have fallen and, you know, how would that you know, people that are in the know, they would probably be appalled. It's like, why would you use that quote? Mm. And, mm. and, uh, some of these guys that have, they're pretty high profile people, guys right. used greatly and you find out, wow, they're human. Right. And so it's, it is difficult. Right. I, so here's, here's one, here's one way we're going to deal with it. Okay. okay. So we, I'd okay. like to have your pushback on this because okay. we wrestled with a lot of these things yeah. today. And one of them was, you know, this is just for me, but when something like this happens, let's just say there's a, there's an issue of some kind, maybe it's in staff, maybe it's a volunteer, maybe it's, and there's an issue or a question of an issue. And it's like, I'm not sure what we, the best thing I've found to do is just hit the pause button. Mm -hmm. Let's just, let's just hit the pause button. Let's just give this, 
some time. Let's give God time to work. Mm-hmm. Maybe maybe something needs to be said. Maybe something doesn't. It just kind of depends on what the situation is. Right. But let's hit the pause button on their service, on their on their time, and so. I found, and God has used that, and uh, the pause button a lot of times will have, if there has been something, you know, you, you can apply Matthew 18 and step through, you know, what's what was, is this what happened? Is this sin? And then how can we restore this such a person, right? Because mm-hmm. our job is restoration. Right. And so that's what I always believe. It. But hit that pause button gives a person time to restore. I personally, this is just me personally, I don't personally think it's easy to restore somebody while they're serving. That's true. I'm not saying it's impossible. I'm right. just saying I think it's some wise wisdom to take that target off their back, if you will. Right. Okay, so to hit the pause button on, let's just say, some music that comes out of the particular church that has had a lot of scandal. Okay. okay. <laughs> I, I and I don't I, I don't know if it's yeah. wrong to be right or wrong to be. I just don't. I don't know. I don't want to throw anybody under the bus. Anybody could fall into these things. Mm-hmm. But there's some high-profile churches. They wrote a lot of music, and there's a lot of— question scandal uh and and some factual immorality that's gone taking place mm-hmm. the question is should we use that material and i i just got out my pause button answer it's like well yeah. you know what if at all possible let's just hit that pause button right because the uh even though you know let's say we sing one of those songs at, at church and so there's they have great music quite frankly and uh probably the person that wrote that is a long way from the scandal i'm guessing yeah could be you know, you know yeah. but Every time we sing that song, they don't get a royalty. We pay we pay this one organization. Right. And they right. I don't know, they pay I don't know how it works actually. Yeah. But it's not like a direct royalty that goes to that. So that's right. one thing because I think some people We're members possibly, of the same group. Yeah. Yeah. And so it's not like, okay, we're gonna boycott these songs because it's like that's not gonna hurt them at all because right. they're not gonna that's not gonna get to them or or change anything. But um so anyway, that was something we thought about. But just hitting the pause button and say, you know what? We need to let some water run into this bridge for a little mm-hmm. bit. You know, time doesn't, time heals all is the saying. I'm not sure if that is always true, but it's it's at least partially true. Right. So right. anyway, that's, those are a couple of ways we I love things. I love what you just said. Uh, hitting the pause button. I come from a religious background um, that was, was very, very adamant, very militant kind of angry at the world. Oh, yeah. And and one thing that I've learned as a result of that is sometimes uh, watching other people who have gone through the same circumstance, and, and I've gotten to know a bunch of them from across the nation at this particular point, sometimes people will see one cliff on the edge of the mesa, and they're so scared of that now that they go run and jump off the cliff on the other <laughs> edge of the mesa. Oh, man. And, and so true, though. I think what we find is yeah. there has to be balance, you know? Yeah. And so when you look at music like that, there there's a great point where you just hit the pause button yeah. and then you circle back around to what's important, what's important. And uh, I, I like, I like uh, what's on your wall out here. What's important now or what's yeah. important next? Uh, yeah. Let's look at what's important right now. And does it teach scriptural principle? Mm-hmm. Does it teach truth? Does it teach anything that could ever be construed as error? And then lastly, what if there's any way to discern it? Do we know why it was written? Was it written just to make people feel good? Uh, was it written to boost that's the ego a, of the individual? Okay, those are all, those are, that's right. a whole nother discussion, but those right. are really important. Right, you know, exactly. I think, I think that's a really, you're really diving yeah. into something that, yeah. that's a lot of, of popular music, Christian music is, uh, I'm, I'm not sure all of it is Christ centered or Christ glorifying. Right. It's a lot of it's just, uh, it's written so that man can feel good about, I don't know, mm-hmm. just have a fun, fun time. So those are a whole, that's almost another yeah, camp but, of but discussion, you're, you're but it's right. important discussion. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, a few years ago, and I forget what it was, there was a popular Christian singer who had a song that was on the top 40 on the CCM charts, the Contemporary oh, yeah, Christian yeah, Music yeah, Charts. Yeah. yeah. At the same time that that same song was either on the top forty yeah. of the country music chart or it was or, or the pop music chart, yeah. And so that's where we start asking the question: If it, there is no discernible <laughs> Jesus Christ in here, <laughs> yeah. no, I know exactly the, yeah. the issue you talk about, and yeah. and she lost a lot of followers, <laughs> right? That, well, there's there's a they, hilarious they've all come back, video. I think there's a hilarious video on on uh, YouTube, <laughs> and it has two guys from Ireland. I know this is a different one. It was uh, with uh, Clint Eastwood. 
reading lyrics from a popular um, um, song. And he said, are you sure this is about Jesus? Said, Y'all sing this in church? <laughs> it's just hilarious. Yeah. It's like, no. anyway. No, and I think we we probably all, I don't throw everybody <laughs> under the bus, but we, we can all be yeah. guilty of that. Here's here's a restoration, po- yeah. reason for a pause button. Here's one of them. And I always read this anytime we we have to deal with something. Um, and this, it would fit here. Brothers, if anyone is caught in a transgression, mm-hmm. you who are spiritual should restore him in a spirit of gentleness. Keep watch on yourself, lest you too be tempted. Yeah. And so, you know, it's almost like if you, those of you that are going to jump into the fire, make sure you've got the proper fire suit on because you can get burned in this t- thing too. Absolutely. And I don't care if it's an immoral situation or dealing with uh, some scandalous uh, a church that has a lot of scandal around it. Um, you go in and start being super critical about certain things. You're going to find yourself get burned. That's right. And I've I've seen this. Um, this is something I take very seriously because yeah. it's like, um, you know, there go I, but for the grace of God. Yeah. And and you know, some some of these people that have fallen have been. I mean, it has wounded my soul. I mean, there's That's been right. some in the last two years, and you know right. who I'm talking about. Absolutely. And uh, and it just it is wounding to the church. It's wounding, you know, the whole thing. But uh, yeah. uh, none of us. I mean, there is nobody. Uh, you know, just I don't care how high you are up. It doesn't mean if there's immorality, if there's something to be exposed, God's going to allow that to be exposed because He's right. not worried about His reputation. Right. And um, we, you know, we hopefully glorify God in everything we do. But anyway. That's a, that's a, I think that's a battle, I guess you want to call it, uh, that we're all kind of dealing with right now. It's right. kind of, kind of difficult. Well, what I'm thankful for is God does restore. I mean, the whole purpose for his coming is redemption. Yeah. Um, so, but that's kind of circles us back around. What do we do with people, um, who have had some influence, say in the Christian church who have been overtaken in sin? Yeah. Uh, and you were mentioning specifically in music, or sometimes it's a uh, religious leader of some sure. sort. Pastors, yeah. Yeah. And uh, I was listening to a podcast uh, last week on a very infamous case that happened in Seattle uh, mm. seven or eight years ago. And it, it, it's really tragic because there are certain things that they might have said that were really good, but now even the good is... It, I'm using some old King King James language here, which tells us, let not your good be evil spoken of. Mm. And there's a point where even the good sometimes is now smeared with the evil that the individual did. And it's Mm. really sad. So it takes that discernment, biblical discernment to understand what does truth look like. Okay. So I'm going to throw a wrench in the works here because, okay, let's just take, let's take someone who has a record of some kind. Um, some, some kind of record that would disqualify them from really from ministry and would get them on some radar in, in a neighborhood. Okay? Right, right. Now, can that person be restored? I, I fully believe they can, mm-hmm. but I would never put that person back in that situation. That's right. All right. Absolutely. And so, so here's some of the things that I've seen with pastors. Um, I've heard, seen the pause button. I've seen restoration. I've seen repentance. And, and I've also seen them actually restored to the positions they were and, and this is just me, and maybe it's because I'm a pastor speaking. I'm just not sure that's. Uh, I'm not saying they're they should be exempt from all ministry. I'm not saying that, but to have them back as a as a lead pastor, it seems like there's something. There's almost a. You, you stepped out of bounds here, and there's you. Full restoration is something uh, restored for sure. Should they be restored to that position? Of course, it depends on the 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 seriousness of the crime of all those right. things. But I've seen some of this happen before, and it's like, and you hear about them. It's like, yeah, they're doing the same thing. It's like I'm, I, I guess I'm still in flux here a little right, bit on right. what what that restoration should look like. Right. Uh, in good graces, fellowship, all those things for sure. Should they be restored back to that position? That's. Uh, Kind of, kind of, obviously depends on the situation. But I, I've been wrestling with that one because yeah. I think, uh, I think we can be, we can be too legalistic on some of this stuff, and we can be too, too gracious. And it's like I'm not meaning just restore someone too quickly. Right. Well, re- the restoration of someone back, of course, to fellowship with the bride of Christ, yeah, with easy. the church, is something that's very important for them yeah, too, for sure. But secondly, um, 
lest they be, uh, and I forget who wrote this. It might be Peter uh, who said, lest they be overburdened with too much sorrow. Yeah. You know, on the yeah. other hand, when it Good comes point. to uh, the office of an overseer, uh, the Bible does tell us in First Timothy chapter three that that individual should not be a novice, lest being lifted up, lifted up with pride, right. they fall into the condemnation as the devil uh, with the devil. Then, lastly, moreover, he must have a good testimony among those who are outside, yeah, lest he fall into the reproach and snare the devil. So there is an element with certain aspects of being a minister of the gospel, and I think in in many areas of leadership, That's really good in which. Um, your reputation matters so much that God always has a plan for every one of his kids. Mm. But there are certain things that become that, that wind up being excluded, primarily both for the sake of the gospel, so yeah. that the gospel doesn't become uh, spoken against because of your, of your reputation in life. Or secondly, uh, because uh, it's not good for you, for that specific individual for anymore, sure. yeah. putting them back in the same circumstance into which they fell, yep. in which they fell. That's difficult. I think, I don't know, we're not going to solve anything here, but this is a good discussion. I yeah. think it's an important yeah. discussion. And we've had it on on certain kinds of music now because yeah. uh, some scandalous things and whatnot. But so, okay, I want to talk about, I think, <laughs> a different kind of war. Okay. Oh, yeah. What about... You know, we've talked about Russia and Ukraine. Right. We've talked about uh, Russia invading Ukraine, what the reasons are, why they might be doing this, um, and trying to get into Putin's mind and his strategy. Mm -hmm. uh, we've also seen a very courageous stand by Ukraine and their president. Mm -hmm. um, now we're seeing some atrocities. No, let me right. back up one. I think I think we talked about this one time. It's like you know if. if Maybe I even said it. If we would engage in this, the the word on the street was, that's automatic World War III. Right. So America, maybe some of these other countries, need to be a little more temperate, on, prudent on what is right. done. Right. Okay, now we're seeing images on the screen that are just, ah, is there ever a place? So I'm, I'm giving right. you a big question here. Right. Is there ever a time and a place to engage and and protect innocent people? And, yeah. and here I am, I'm saying this because you know, I'm fully trusting all the news that I see. And it's hard, to, you know, it's hard right, because right. you don't know what to, That's good. how much yeah. of it do you take? Is this 100% accurate or 90% accurate? But then, you know, even if, what we're saying is pretty hard to deny. Right, exactly. Um, and I, I think a lot of people are seeing the same things. And so which, what should we do? Should uh, yeah. Has it changed anything in your mind? Well, so first of all, let's go back and just point out that going way back in church history, this has been a major question yeah. that was asked. And the greatest theologian really between the Apostle Paul and probably the time of the Reformers, uh, and a man admired very much by every Christian who followed him, not always fully agreed with, but uh, his name was Augustine, Augustine of Hippo uh, in Northern Africa. Yep. Augustine asked this very question, and it, he was the first one to really bring out the question that later became known as it developed as the just war theory. Um, what is the right cause for war, mm -hmm. and then how, we, how do we conduct it? And I think what we have seen uh, as troops, as Russian troops, have pulled out of Ukraine, and you can see clearly, and they actually said, oh, no, these were people that were killed by local uh, individuals yeah. after we left. Yeah. And yet uh, it was pointed out just today in a news broadcast that I was listening to, this is the first war in world history in which the vast majority of people can actually look at the conduct of the war in near real time. Yeah. For instance, there are, uh, there's yeah, video evidence that the Russian that. troops were still there while these individuals, while these bodies were lying in the street. Right. So we can falsify the statements made by the Russians at this time. Right. And these are women and children, yeah. some of whom have had their arms tied behind their backs. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's wrong. That. So that's a question. How yeah. then does a Christian look at this? So here's what Augustine, he said, there's two real questions a person has to ask. And he, of course, said it in Latin, but he talked about the jus ad bellum and the jus in bello. The jus ad bellum is right to go to war, and jus ad bello is right conduct in that war. Oh, wow. And so when we talk about that, clearly there is the question as to whether they should, they were right to go to war. Right. And uh, they dispute what we would say, obviously, when you are invading someone else's territory, uh, simply to absorb it into your own territory, that's wrong. 
Mm-hmm. But secondly, there is the question, even were it right, is that right conduct in the war? And well, the answer clearly huge, is no. Yeah, I was going to say, that one we can answer. Right, you're right. And so since since the conduct, and you know, based on the, the, the facts, the best we can tell it, these are... These are real, this is real atrocities. And and by the way, I also want to say that this is going to be aired probably a couple of weeks out. So there's going to be a lot of things happening right. when people hear this. Uh, right. We're we're seeing this uh, kind of a couple of weeks before this is going to air. But uh, so who knows what actions may be taken by then. But I think that, uh, yeah, the, the atrocities there, it's just, it's more than you can stomach. It's just... I was in I was in the gym when I first saw some of these images, mm-hmm. and and there was a there's a lot of people there. So everybody just kind of stopped, and you could I think we were all thinking the same thing. It's like, oh my gosh, right? Is this is this really what's is this is really what's going on there? Right. And I and you kind of feel like, oh, it's heavy. I mean, I right. felt it. I felt right. the heaviness of the the atrocity and the the what would you say that one more time that last one the the, uh, the no, right conduct in the right war. conduct yeah. in war by there's right, no right. i don't i don't think anybody would i don't know who would side with uh saying this is right conduct exactly it's, it's a pretty worldwide i think people are seeing this well i think we need to step back and just point out that when it comes to the proper structure of why um war will be fought and can be fought and how it should be fought this is one of the great joys of being a Christian hmm. because there is actually a structure to help us understand in a virtuous way what is right and what is wrong. Uh, there are some Christians in history that have taken an absolutely pacifistic view yep. that we should never go to war. Ever. But the scripture Ever. never gives us that impression. Right. But it does lay out basic principles by which we ought to uh, conduct every area of our life. And by the way, when we, when we begin to appeal to those principles, when we begin to appeal to virtue, uh, the one thing that you can say is that truth is not malleable, not at that point. Right. And so the current, um, ideas in our t- cult- culture that, uh, truth is what you make of it. Um, absolutely. Yep. When reality runs right into it, the truth is not malleable like that. Yeah, and and we can see the truth and the of the reality in that in those situations. Right. Is there? There's a time to kill, a time to heal. This is uh, Solomon speaking back in Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes. a long time ago. Uh, a time to weep, a time to laugh. I thought he even said a time, uh, a time for peace war and a time, time for peace. Where is that? Yeah, right. The last one, a time mm-hmm. for war and a time for peace. Mm-hmm. And so even, you know, this is the inspired word of God to say it's a time for war. It makes you, it gives you a pause. It's like, okay, so what, what would be that time? And you, you mentioned too, that Augustine uh, brought out. Here's some that, that uh, I remember we studied this in seminary. I, I don't know that I found the actual same list, but this is similar to the mm-hmm. list as I recall it. Mm-hmm. Uh, it talks about what is a just war. Mm-hmm. And so that would be what Christians are trying to do to say, okay, what would justify us going to war? And and how do you know if there's a time for war? Well, if it's at a just war. So here's the questions. A just war, and there's a lot behind this, but I'm just going to read the the statement. A just war is declared by a legitimate government. That's right. So it's not individuals. It's not a a posse. It's not a, you know, that, Mm -hmm. that, that would be a legitimate government that would have to be, make that according to this person's opinion of of uh, a just war a just war is an act of last resort mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so i think you know i think we see that on display we've tried to there's our government has tried to do a lot of things mm-hmm. um sanctions and whatnot a just war is fought for a just cause right that's an interesting one um you know in this case it, it's this new information you know, at one point it was like uh, Putin trying to figure out why he was trying to push NATO back or push people away from his border. And then all of a sudden now it looks just, it looks pretty raw. Yeah, absolutely. It sure does. And so um, is it a just war uh, for a just cause? Well, it seemed like the cause has shifted just, I think in the hearts of people anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, a just war seeks prudent goals. Thought that was an interesting one. Mm-hmm. Um you know, and you could argue, you know, whether somebody's goals and motives, those are really hard to do. But when you see the actions on the ground, it's like, well, right. this is uh and then finally, a just war uses moral means. 
Yes. Yeah. It's, it's, it's similar to right. Augustine's uh, thought. Well, actually, um, so this is intriguing. Um, it was uh, Thomas Aquinas. Uh, it's called yep. Thomism. But, but in that, in his Summa Theologica, is where he actually picks up, um, after uh, many centuries, he picks up the discussion Augustine brought and begins to lay that out even a little further. And I think that's probably the the items that you were just reading from. Okay, It actually comes from Aquinas, but okay. it's built on the foundation that Augustine was laying. And you can still see those two elements involved there. Uh, is it a yeah. right cause for war? And secondly, is the conduct Moral within conduct. that war uh, correct? Right. And so, and that's really the question that um, should undergird whether America should ever go to war again, right. if we ever do. And what are the circumstances? And also, how do we conduct ourselves if we're ever called back wow. into it? Lots of questions. I, mean, I doubt that uh, anybody um, on the l executive or legislative branch are going to be calling and asking us. But just in case, just we, in case. we put it out there. These are these are some principles. <laughs> I'll give them listen. your phone number. <laughs> <laughs> we can give them some principles to yeah. at least to think through, and right. and so hopefully they've got somebody uh, close to them giving them giving advice. Well, I hope so. Well, we've kind of burned through a, a lot of uh, a lot of time and a lot of topic here, Nathan. And uh, but I appreciate it. these are these are this is what's right in our face, right? Absolutely. When we turn on the news, this is what we hear. So I appreciate you having a fresh. Uh, perspective and thoughts on this and it's good to good to kick these things around in the meantime i think it behooves us all to be strong and very courageous god bless you all thanks for joining us